Uh, hi. Uh, uh, so I, uh, I'm Ben, uh, and I'm going to talk uh, briefly today about uh, the local overlay store, uh, which is something that I've been working on recently in collaboration with uh, Repolit and Obsidian Systems. Uh, it's uh, not actually been upstreamed yet, um, but we do have an uh, open pull request. Um, uh, and we'd like to get it merged as an experimental feature so that it's uh, generally available for people to use and uh, give feedback on. Uh, but before I explain how the overlay store works, uh, you first have to know a bit about the Nix store API. Um, uh, and I'm sure many of you are familiar with that, uh, but for those that aren't, I'll just say a few brief words about that um, to begin with. Um, so you're probably aware that uh, Nix packages are normally installed in the uh, slash Nix slash store directory, um, but that's just the file system aspect of the Nix store. Uh, every uh, valid path in the Nix store also has metadata associated with it. Uh, and this metadata is stuff like uh, hashes, dependencies, um, or which derivation produced the, the path as an output. Um, and to ensure that the, uh, the necessary metadata and variants are maintained, uh, uh, all Nix commands, uh, like Nix build, uh, access and manipulate the Nix store uh, via the, uh, the Nix store API. Um, and the API has, um, uh, has methods for, for basic operations, like checking what's in a store or for adding new stuff to a store. Uh, and it also has methods for more advanced operations, like garbage collection or verifying that a store's contents remain valid. Um, and so there's several different um, uh, implementations of the Nix store. Uh, the most prototypical of them is, uh, is the local store. Uh, and this uh, lets you open, uh, as you might guess from the name, it lets you open a Nix store on your local file system. Um, but because it uh, directly opens the SQLite database, which contains the store metadata, uh, it requires that the user running the Nix command has the appropriate permissions. Uh, usually that means being root. Uh, so, so for multi-user systems where you don't want non-privileged users to be able to open uh, the database and modify the store direct directly, uh, th there's the remote store. Um, and this basically proxies all the operations through the, uh, the Nix daemon process. Uh, and there's a bunch of other stores as well, which I won't go into. Um, but returning to the main point of the talk, uh, what we've done is add a new type of Nix store. Um, and because it's based on the, the local store and it behaves much the same way, uh, we, we've called it the local overlay store. Uh, the main difference is that the, the local overlay store takes a, a URI to another store as a parameter. Um, and then whenever the, the local overlay store is queried for a path, uh, and that path doesn't exist in the overlay, uh, we forward the query down to the lower store. Um, and this effectively gives us the union of the metadata in, in the lower store and the overlay. Uh, so, so that's the metadata aspect of the store. Um, to, to, to provide a unified view of the Nix store directory on the file system, uh, we use OverlayFS, uh, which is the same Linux file system that, that Docker uses to unify all the layers in a, a, a Docker image. Um, we don't have Nix set up the overlayFS mount um, because the user that's running the Nix command probably doesn't have permission to do that. But we do at least have the uh, uh, have Nix check that the, the mount point's been set up correctly. Um, so you can uh, you can build any new derivation in the overlay store, um, and uh, it, its outputs will get p placed in the overlay. Um, but it can depend on paths that exist in the lower store. Um, but if one of its dependencies doesn't exist in the lower store, then that just gets realized in the overlay too. Um, you can garbage collect paths in, in the, the overlay store, um, but this won't affect anything that's in the, the, uh, the lower store. Um, in fact, nothing you do to the local overlay store should, should affect the, un, uh, the underlying store. Uh, the, the particular use case we have for this um, is, is to have the, uh, the, the lower store on a 16 terabyte cloud storage device. Um, and uh, th this is attached or mounted uh, read-only in, in many different containers. Um, uh, and then each container is given a one gigabyte overlay on top of that 16 terabyte store. Uh, so inside each container, it appears to the user as if they have um, a 16 terabyte Nix store of their own with many useful packages, and they can build their own stuff in, in, in this store that depends on those packages. Um, uh, what, uh, one important point that uh, I should say um, is that the lower store can't um, or mustn't be modified while it's mounted as part of, of the overlay store. Uh, if that happens, you might run into race conditions. Um, but as long as it's unmounted first, you can uh, add new paths to the lower store, um, and then they'll be available in, in the overlay store the next time it gets mounted. Um, 
And th this is the main advantage of the local overlay store uh, over the more naive approach of putting um, the entire Nix directory, including the database, onto OverlayFS. Uh, if you do that second thing, if your database is on OverlayFS, then when w the first time the store is modified, uh, the database gets copied, um, and then if any paths are added to, to, to the original, uh, they won't be available in, in, in the second. Um, and with that, uh, here's the obligatory tweak slide, which you're probably all tired of seeing by now. Um, but that was pretty much everything I had to say, so thanks for listening. <laughs>